Hello, hello, my amazing listeners. This is Catherine Laranger, your host of the My Dead Dragon podcast. And I am super excited to be in this conversation today with Consuela Munoz. And Consuela is a speaker, a leadership strengths coach, author of her story, The Day She Stopped. And leaders hire her to master the power of leadership because most dismiss their natural leadership style lack confidence and lose their top performers. Consuela helps them discover their leadership strengths, build their confidence and attract the best. Bottom line, after working with Consuela, you will be the confident leader that everyone would love to work with. And so Consuela, welcome to the show. Really excited to be in this conversation with you and would love to invite you to start us out by sharing your story of how you realized that you were the main character of your own story and the heroine of your journey. Yeah, and thank you so much for having me on. You're super excited. Wanted to ask everybody, have you ever noticed that if you love your job, but you don't like your manager, that you're ready to leave? But if you love your manager, and don't necessarily enjoy your job, you'll still stay. So that is something that is really part of my story. And for me, it was this one day I stopped because I had this epiphany that my entire life, I had been just average. Everything Mm -hmm. about me was just average. I was smart, but not a genius, pretty, but not gorgeous, average height, well, maybe a little short, (laughs) but I had this thing. Have you ever had this thought where, geez, I'm just average. Mm. And for me, I knew in that moment that I was meant for more. Not only was I meant for more, but I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to have an impact, an impact on my team, on my organization, my community, but even beyond that. And that's really when I had this realization, like you've talked about, right? Where no one's coming to my rescue. It's up to me to figure out what is my more and how am I going to get that to happen? Hmm. So, so interesting, Consuelo. So, so tell me about that moment where you you decided you realized like you had been believing in this idea that I'm just average because I think a lot of people can really relate to that to realizing like wait a minute I'm meant for more here like how did that happen for you yeah I mean it wasn't like some big life-changing event I mean honestly Mm. it's it's it might be seem a little silly but literally I was just walking into work one day I'm in the the long hallway leading to my office. And I just really just kind of came to a stop like, oh my gosh, everything. I mean, it just kind of, it just popped in my head. Mm. Now, you know why I can try to analyze why I think it happened. And one of my parts with that is a little while earlier, I had taken the strength finder assessment. And when I got the results back, I really, in the results, it boosted my confidence like crazy, just getting the Mm. results. And it was a way for me to see a glimpse of what greatness I had inside me. Hmm. And so I think that kind of, you know, was one of those things that happened before I had this big thing, but that was really it. Just walking in, you know, the sun was shining, you know, Hmm. I'm almost to my office and like, whoa. And when I say stop, you know how it is like in the movies where you just stop and everyone else keeps moving in a blur and you're just Mm -hmm. kind of standing still like, don't they realize? Can't they see? I've just had this huge thought. Why wow. is everyone just going about their day, right? Wow. So that's really how it happened. That is so cool. And so how, because I think that, well, I, I don't think I know that life whispers, right? And it kind of whispers like, hey, there's there's more for you. You're meant for more. Like you've got a light to shine. You've got gifts to share. And so often we buy into the idea that we're just average, and that there's actually nothing special about us when in fact i know that everyone has something special about them so how did you decide what what was the piece where you were able to decide okay this is here's this like epiphany this moment where the light is shining down and like wait a minute i meant for more here 
and how how were you able to move forward into discovering and living into what that was as opposed to well I guess I'm just average right like that pull of the familiar right instead of just staying where I was you know exactly. being just average again it comes back to strengths for me I you know full mm. disclosure I'm a complete strengths nerd so mm. I'm going to talk about strengths a whole mess here but um, for me, it was like, okay, these are my strengths. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of sat myself down like, okay, we're going to figure this out. What is what are we going to do about this? And so, you know, what are my strengths? What am I what do I really love to do? Mm. And what am I really passionate about? Mm. And where, um, you know, my passions and what um, am I good at, right? With these strengths. Mm -hmm. And so I sat down, let me think about this. And, you know, at first it was kind of more questions than answers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so in this day and age, like questions, I'm like, okay, Google this, Google this, Google this. And then I just was kind of being structured. And then I just went with the flow. Mm -hmm. And when I went with this flow, I had this vision, mm -hmm. ginormous vision of what I wanted to do. Yeah. And now I'm not going to go from where I was that day to that vision, but I'm like, okay, what are those first steps? What are my steps yeah. I'm going to take from now on? Every step I take is toward that big vision. And mm -hmm. that vision, part of that was me being a strengths coach mm -hmm. and helping everyone be the leader that they're meant to be. Because I really believe that everyone is a leader, whether you lead, you know, a giant corporation, a team, or even just yourself, you are a leader. And how do you, um, become the best one that you can be. Mm, I love that. And, and for my listeners, I'm going to invite you to really consider that. How am I showing up as the leader of my own life? And, and so often, you know, we think that, oh, it's, it looks like, you know, leading this organization or this team or these people, and I'm kind of out there in front, but really it starts with yourself. It starts with yourself. So, so Consuela, so for, for people who are, maybe new to the idea, like, wait a minute, like I'm a leader, like I'm the leader of myself. What are some of those first steps that they can take to, to kind of start to discover like, well, what does that look like for me? And how do I really honor my own strengths and skills and talents? Yes, definitely. And, and I really think that anyone can do this. I mean, I, I work with leaders and business leaders, but even folks entering college, Lord knows I was hoping like, where was this assessment when, you know, I started 20 some years ago, it would have been useful then. Right. But so that is, I have what I call my CEO way and it's three steps. The first step is celebrating your gifts. Mm. And so that means to me, let's take that strength finder assessment. Let's figure out what are your top five strengths. Now, if you find, if you take the assessment and you get all 34 in order, chances are, you know, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to look and see what's your top strength, what are your top five strengths. And the very next thing you're going to do, you're going to go straight to the bottom of the list and say, <laughs> oh my gosh, what do I not have? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's complete human nature to do that. And, and so then we, you know, we can start fretting like, oh, I really wish I had the strength or, oh, I really would have mm -hmm. wanted this strength or, you know, everybody values this strength and it's number, it's the last one for me. Oh, this is terrible. And so I want to bring us back in and say, no, we're going to celebrate the strengths and the gifts that we do have. Mm -hmm. And, and part of that is, um, I don't know about you, but how much free time do you have? Right. Nobody's got a lot of free time. So we only have so much time to develop ourselves. So we're going to focus on those things that we are naturally good at mm -hmm. and not worry about those things that are at the bottom of the list. And then our next step is really to engage our strengths mm. because anyone can take an assessment and you can get inspired and raise your confidence, just taking it. And then you put it on the shelf and then what, you know, anyone can do that, but we're not going to do that. We're going to learn how can you engage your strengths? How can you apply them in your everyday, whether it's at work or it's at home and, and really um, begin to use your strengths with purpose. And we are going to do that until you get to step three and own your confidence, because mm -hmm. when you know your strengths and you really own them, there's no room for doubts or those, you know, sneaky saboteurs that want to talk in your ear because you know what you are capable of and you know the way in which you get things done. 
And there's no room for that. So that's the CEO way. And that's what we use to build confidence, make you that leader that everyone wants to work for. Because let me tell you, folks, people want to work for confident leaders. And also, confidence really raises your presence. Mm. And so that's what we're going to do. I love that, right? And, and, and truly what we focus on, we find and it grows and absolutely as, as humans there is this tendency and there's, you know, kind of a part of our brain that wants to focus on the deficiency. And so it really does take some rigor and decision-making to focus on the strengths and let's build to these and, and in doing that to really build our sense of self and our confidence. And so Consuela, were you always confident or was this kind of a process that you had to go through yourself? Well, I'd like to say, yeah, I've always been confident, right? Like who doesn't want to say that? But no, for sure. Um, I've had, you know, trouble with saboteurs, um, you know, and they, even, even after I've been doing a lot of work with strengths, they can, they can find their way in, right? You never know what's going to trigger those negative thoughts or those negative, um, ways that we deal with ourselves, And, um, and when I was younger, there's always things, there's always people around, there are going to boost you up. And my latest, you know, dealing with some big saboteurs, um, like many folks, we're all dealing with the pandemic. And when the pandemic first hit, I really um, had kind of a fall down. And it was me turning to a few of my friends that are coaches, like, mm. you know, help me bring me out of this, because it's easy for me as a coach to help someone else. It's a lot harder as a coach to help yourself, right? And so I think it's important to have, you know, the coach that you need when you need them, whatever you're trying to do, make sure, you know, you're seeking out that coach and it's not counseling and it's not therapy and, but it's something that everyone needs and we should, we should embrace that. I mean, you're not going to um, watch. So I'm in, in Wisconsin with the Packers. You're not going to watch the Packers play and be like, oh, I see they don't have any coaches. Of course, <laughs> if, if you're going to be at that top level, you're going to have coaches. So if you want to be the most amazing person that you're meant to be, to have that impact, to make a difference, you really need to be working with at least one coach, if not more. Mm, I love that. And I 100% agree with that. I have my own coaches that I work with. And we, you know, I believe that as humans, we're, we're on this kind of spiral of becoming in this spiral of growth and we can't see our blind spots and we don't know what it's like to live at that next level because we haven't lived there. And so we need those people who can really help us to build a bigger believing in ourselves as we kind of navigate what that looks like for us in our journey. So I love that. I love that. Yeah. And so, so what were some of the challenges for you in, um, in, in really continuing to decide to live into your strengths, to really decide to, okay, I'm doing this thing. I've had this kind of moment where I'm like, wait a minute, there's a different way here. I'm tired of, of, you know, kind of convincing myself that I'm just average. I'm ready to really step into whatever that next level is. And I'm deciding and deciding and deciding because it's not like a one and done. We don't just flip a switch, right? We decide and then the fear shows up and the saboteurs and they try to pull us back down to the familiar. And so what were some of those challenges along that, that journey for you in continuing to make that decision for yourself? Yeah, again, having the vision and it's mm. a big one. So I know I'm not going to get there right away. So, but what is, what am I going to do? Right. And so at the time, you know, my background, I'm a chemist and I was working in a safety department, like, okay. And so, but I know I want to go do this thing. So what am I going to mm. do? So I'm going to go and try to get a job in HR. And they're like, well, you can't go in HR because you don't have an HR degree. I'm like, what? And like, you can't get an HR degree unless you're in an HR job. I'm like those things don't even make sense, but okay. But so I'm like, okay, but I got to find a way. I have mm. to find a way to do more with these strengths. So, and the company I was working, they had a women's resource group. So like a volunteer group. And so I joined that and said, Hey, we got to do something with this. And they're like, at first, no, no, no. And I'm like, no, we got to do something with this until I convinced them. And they let me create my first ever strengths program. And it was mm. awesome when we got to really, um, so I create this 12 week program where I'm going to work with all of these women 
to um, grow their confidence. And what was so amazing is seeing that, Mm. you know, women, I had one woman in there. She, she joined, she joined the group and was completely disengaged Mm. and, you know, she showed up, but she was really quiet, could barely get her to, you know, speak up and join the group. Right. And she just kind of, if, if you, you know, like she wanted to blend in like to the background and not really yeah. she's there, but she doesn't really want to be spotlighted or noticed or anything. Mm. And by the end of the program, she had completely done a 180 and she was, you know, really dressing really smart. And she came into our, our last event and I'm like, you are just like glowing. And she said, yeah, I'm, I'm getting all, you know, all the people around me are asking me if I got a haircut, if I've lost weight, because they knew they could see something changed about her but they weren't even sure what and mm-hmm. that difference that difference that people see is when you are in your confidence when you mm-hmm. really know what you're capable of doing you will glow you'll like you'll have this energy and you'll be engaged and people want to work with that and she um she ended up you know the company was was getting ready to to make some changes in her department and she probably um, would have been on the way out, but she was able to have one of the things we do as a strengths conversation and was able to have that with their managers. And they said, you know, in basically creating a new type of job that they needed to have something new that they should be doing that they weren't. And they loved it so much. They, they gave her that role. She, you know, was able to stay in the company and, um, it also boosted her even further up. Because now she came up with an idea and they're like, yeah, we should be doing that. And really because she was engaged Mm. versus, you know, back in that disengage, I'll just, you know, do bare minimum and get through. And so for me, as far as getting over a challenge, that was like that big thing that I'm like, okay, what I, that vision I had Mm -hmm. is right. This, this is amazing for me. And it energizes me mm-hmm. and it helps so many other people to see themselves as amazing and, and I'm in the right place. Mm-hmm. So it's that first hurdle. There's been yeah. many more, you know, when I made that decision, you know, made that decision to leave the company and go out on my own and do that. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bombardment of negative things when you first start mm-hmm. your own business and you, you know, you're starting to work with people. And so it's, it's kind of like a roller coaster sometimes, and you just really need to keep those people around you that can help bring you back up out of those valleys. Mm, I love that. And, and also Consuela, the, the, the nugget, so many nuggets there. And one of the ones that really kind of stands out for me is that you have to keep trying, right? Like often we have this idea in our head that it's going to look like this and it's going to go in this direction. And so if we experience maybe like a no or something that feels like a failure, the tendency could be like, oh, it's just not for me. I'm going to give up. But for us to really like, no, okay, well then what's another way? And if I didn't believe it was impossible, what would I do? And what could be another idea here? And to keep at it. And and so how can, uh, how can people connect with you? And I know that you have a really cool free gift for my listeners. Can you tell me about that as well, please? Yes, so definitely what I've got to offer for everyone is my confidence recipe, how to create that confidence for yourself. And it really talks in more detail about some of the things in the CEO way. And as a bonus recipe, I've also got how to do the confidence power up. So ways that you can just daily increase your, your, your confidence and power if you've got you know, an interview or a big meeting or something coming up and you just really want to, to present as confident, it can really help you do that. Um, you know, I, I didn't really talk about strengths much. And so, um, I'd love to connect with any of you and talk more through what that strengths assessment looks like and what it can look like for you, because there's nothing greater than getting that strengths report back and seeing in black and white, in like words on a page coming from somebody else Mm. telling you all the most amazing parts of you. And Mm. it's so worthwhile that I want more and more people to be able to have that information and know that they're meant for more. They're meant to have an impact in this world. Mm. I love that. And the world needs you 
to shine your light and bring your gifts and talents and make that impact. And so, of course, for my listeners, all of those, the links, the the links to um, Consuela's generous gifts will be in my show notes. And Consuela, any last words you would like to share for my listeners? Um, and, and, you know, one of the ways, one of the kind of spins that we take on this is, is there anything that you wish you could go back and tell yourself in your journey? What might that be? So for me, it's that there's no reason for us to settle for just average. Mm. When there is greatness inside of each and every one of us, and know that you are meant to have an impact in this world. And when you figure out what your more is meant to be, that impact will become apparent. Oh, I've got the God bumps on that one. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. And so Consuela, thank you so much for being here today to all of my beloved listeners. Thank you for tuning in, spending this time together. And if you're loving the podcast, getting value, you can support me by subscribing to my YouTube channel and also by leaving a rating um, for the podcast. And that just helps to get this message out to the people who need to hear it. And until next time, I will catch you then.